and they cannot speak. Hi everybody, it's Amanda here, your kitty of carnage, and I'm here with my co-host, Maddie McCobb, your master of monsters. Yes, guys, we just got back from seeing a doozy of a film a called doozy. Be Quiet Place. A quiet place. Yes. You know, Kitty Carnage reviews, we're not going to spoil anything till the end of the review. Yes. But we have a lot of points when we get onto this review. So we're going to go ahead and go into a very vague plot. So we're following this family. Something is going on. We're running from something. Yes. We don't really know what's happening at the beginning of the film and it takes a little while to get into that but we're watching this family mm -hmm. try to survive try to defeat whatever is happening mm -hmm. and yes. at the same time we're watching them grow and learn and mm -hmm. it it's it's something else a lot of this film is done in either sign language uh so social cues and like, there's hardly any dialogue. There's, there's some music. Yeah, there, and there's some music. Not a lot. It's a, it's a very interesting concept. It's a very interesting way of doing it. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it definitely floored me. It definitely threw me for a loop at first. Mm -hmm. It's directed and written by John Krasinski. If anybody knows John Krasinski. Of Office was, fame. Yeah, yes, uh, Office. But um, like I was telling you earlier, I was like, that's the guy from Medium. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That one episode of Medium. Real life wife, Emily Blunt. Who I love. Yes, Absolutely Mary love. Poppins. Uh, the, the Baker's neighbor. Wife. Yes. The Baker's Wife and Into the Woods. And Devil best Wears character Prada. in <laughs> Devil's Wear, yes. Devil Wears Prada. Love her. Go ahead and go into this review without spoiling anything. Our first category is going to be the story. That's going to be hard to kind of critique the story. Critique no, the story without spoiling so. it. I don't think, so. It, I don't think so. All you have to know is it's good. The story is yes. well done. Yes, it it's is. Very well, it's a very well-written script. Really, like, hits everything that you need it to hit mm -hmm. to cause all the emotions to come crashing through you. Oh, God. And, yes. yeah, the story, it, it held me glued. Here is how glued we were. We were debating whether we should go pee or not. Yes, we did. I'm Only not going to say we're those white trash people that brought wine in a purse. But we did. But we brought wine in a purse. Yeah. And so I'm glad bottles. we brought the wine because that was an intense There were some film. intense moments that I needed to have a, a glass of wine. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to say that we were drinking wine during the film, but I will say that my bladder was screaming at me at one point, and I was like, no, I can't. I can't. I got to know what happens. It didn't help that the girl in front of us was taking selfies. That's very true. There was a girl in front of us, and everybody... And the guys was, behind us were narrating everything yeah, for Yeah, in front of us, like, she was in a wheelchair. I hate to say it, but she was in a wheelchair, and she was taking selfies, and I was like, you're an asshole, because... Like, I didn't mind that they came in the middle of the film... Okay. Yeah, they came in like 15 minutes in. Yeah, and they came in. Walked right in front of us yeah, the whole time. and they were trying to get her in the chair, which I didn't mind because I was like, you know what? She's in a wheelchair. It's okay. I'm not going to be rude about it. And then she starts home. taking selfies like, oh, I'm in a wheelchair. What you going to do about it? Yeah, and I was like, really? Really? Because she literally put the phone up and went. It was like, so. So that was awkwardness point. A little bit. But um, we were watching it the whole time, and me and him were just like, oh. Oh, yeah, like, we had to, like, go in shifts yeah, to the bathroom. Yeah, we had to go in shifts. I didn't send this fuller review because there was a moment that I walked out. That, I, we sent her to the bathroom in a very poignant moment. Yeah, the itself I thought was very brilliant. Yeah. I thought that the way they did it, the foreshadowing, and just the whole point of it was just brilliant. I liked how mm -hmm. they went in right away with the story. Oh, yeah. They Absolutely. went right away. They had no, there was no, like, meeting up. There was nothing of that. It was like balls to the wall, just and it went there. All of the exposition was done in any kind of newspaper paper clippings that you saw. Mm -hmm. Um, in he had a 
this doesn't spoil anything. He had a board where he was mm-hmm. like taking notes about what was happening. Yeah. And that's where you got most of your exposition mm-hmm. because it starts mm-hmm. like kind of in the middle right of their story. Yeah, it like, starts in the middle of the story. Like it's already been happening to them. Mm-hmm. So you're just like kind of thrust right into it. I like that too. I did too. I thought it was a really brilliant idea. Well, our next point of the review is going to be the act. Wow. What can I say? I mean, Emily Blunt was amazing. And you see, John Krasinski, the kids were awesome, but Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt made the movie. She did. Emily Blunt and the girl, the daughter, who I believe deaf. is actually a deaf actress. She was deaf. Yes. Is really, is mm-hmm. actually a deaf actress. I believe I read an article where they were actually looking for deaf actresses. That John Krasinski was very adamant mm-hmm. about having a deaf girl play their daughter. Mm-hmm. And she was absolutely phenomenal, but Emily Blunt carried that film. Um, John Krasinski had some wonderful, beautiful moments. Mm-hmm. Beautiful moments. God, we can't spoil. See, we can't really talk about this film without spoiling it. Like that's what's so hard about talking about this film because True. there's the points in the film that we're gonna get into the spoilers. Once the there spoilers there were some come very up, beautiful moments. Yes, beautiful. from all the actors. Yes. But the film centers around this one family, and they are basically the only characters that you see for the most part. Mm-hmm. And and you don't care. You're not looking for anything else but what's happening to them. And mm-hmm. it's in part by the act, it, it was done so well that you don't even think, about, well, what's happening in the rest of the world? What's happening over here and there and you know why are these houses abandoned you know things like that you don't think about that you're just like you want to know what's going on with them and that's all you care about okay well the next point is actually the most interesting and that is the gore y'all know it's not a kitty carnage review unless we talk about the gore it's minimal it's minimal but But it's done well it serves the point yeah it does what texas chainsaw massacre did basically don't see the gore but you you feel the um the pain the pain exactly you feel like they show like a second of something mm-hmm. but you know what you saw mm-hmm. it doesn't have to beat you over the yeah, head exactly with the gore to get its point across yeah. kind of like texas chainsaw when you see the girl getting on the hook you don't see her get on the hook but you see her lifted you know she's about to get on the hook mm-hmm. that's what they did with this film yeah is they didn't show what happened but you saw yeah, you either saw the aftermath, or you knew what was coming. Because you heard a noise. Yeah. You heard something that happened. You heard the scream. You knew mm-hmm. what happened. Not as King Carnage gore, but it served the purpose. And I'm glad it didn't, because I, I think if it would have went full gore, it I would have overshadowed. It, it yeah. would have overshadowed the story, the acting, mm-hmm. the, the cinematography. Because this know. film is PG-13. It is. And it did what, like, uh, Poltergeist did. Yeah. It did what Poltergeist I, did. It did what Jaws did. I'll tell you, it's one of the first PG-13 movies in a couple of decades yeah. that really set me on edge. Like, exactly. To be to be crass, I think my butthole was clenched through yeah. most of the movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, oh, yeah. The I was like... Was, <sighs> yeah, the film was very, oh, no. very oh, no. Like, yeah. It, the there film, were moments film was very tense. Very and, intense. And it did what, like, you know, Jaws, one of my, my favorite films, Jaws is the scariest movie I've ever seen. That's PG, you know, Poltergeist PG-13, you know, mm-hmm. you have all these films that are, are lightly rated. And their, their understanding is beyond the point of fear itself. Because I'm sorry, but I watch all these other films that are very gory and I don't, I don't get scared. Yeah. I don't get scared because it's there. But an idea is scarier to me than a visual. What I feel like he did correctly was he made you, like, he put you right into it, made you care, mm-hmm. care about these characters. He made mm-hmm. you care about this family mm-hmm. and, and what happens to them. And yeah. that way you don't have to have the gore. Mm-hmm. You don't have to see bodies getting whatever, devoured, ripped open or whatever. Yeah, that happened. You don't have to see things like that to actually empathize with these characters and want 
them to have and a just happy the ending. noise the noise was scary yes. itself they didn't yeah. even show anything they just had the noise and that's yeah it scarier was... than seeing it it's just the noise of it go into the visuals we have the gore and the visuals just it was so beautiful it was pretty this it film was, was beautiful uh, one of the scenes that actually got me was when they were leaving and he turned and the sun hit mm-hmm. you know it's part of the mm-hmm. the sun hit and you see him and her standing next to each other and the sun hit and the daughter's right behind them. That scene was amazing. Oh, yeah. It doesn't really fit in with the visuals, but we, you know, it's not one of your points. So I wanted to talk real quick mm-hmm. about the sound. There was a lot yes. of times where you've got the point of view of the deaf daughter. Mm-hmm. So there is nothing. Oh, yes. There's no sound. And it's brilliant. It was it puts you right in that moment and it's so tense because you're sitting yes. there like she can't hear she doesn't know if she's making sound yes she doesn't know what's so happening many, yes oh. there's so many scenes where she's doing it you're like is something gonna happen oh yeah and you're like no, no, no and oh. then something does happen you're like no <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh i'm sure the audience loved our reaction yeah we were, we're very like, no. loud yeah we we're like no girl no <laughs> yeah it was awesome though usually music is kind of like in my category of musicals but the one scene we're getting spoiled well no it's not a spoiler there's a scene between john krasinski and see the thing about the film is they never establish <laughs> the characters names no they never do they're in the their mom the and credits. dad they're in the credits. As mom and dad. No, as they're, they actually have names in the credits. I looked. Oh, really? Yeah, they have names. But they never tell you their no. names. You never know any of their names. I see them as mom and dad. Yeah, and then, like, even the brother only refers to his sister as her. Yeah. Like, through the whole film. And so you never know their names until you, if you look at the credits, they actually have names. Oh, well, I didn't know that. But the mom and the dad, they have a scene together where they dance. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And that's the only song because she's listening to headphones. And she puts the headphone in his ears and they dance together and those serenades. There's a lot of really beautiful moments. Yeah. There's a lot of really like poignant, you know. We actually grabbed each other's hands through the movie. We did. We were like, like, oh. like several times. Several times. We yeah. were grabbing each other's yeah. hands. We were like, no. We were all like, we were like, oh. Like it was a very yeah. emotional moment for all of us for yeah. the two of us it was i enjoyed it but i told her after the film that was very cathartic for me yeah visually stunning from the moment one from the first title card like stunning the use of the lights that was really good that was a really good use of the lights like really when was. you saw certain colors it was like <gasps> no yeah <laughs> danger and colors yeah. the red lights that they played in the film was yeah it was everything was done the color with red. reason yes everything was done with a lot of thought behind it yes the color red was very play was played so well in the film mm-hmm. the color red like i definitely want to go see it again and see what i missed Exactly, because yeah. they had little now that I know, yeah. Now that I know everything, like I want to go back and like pick up the cues that were already there that I didn't pick up at the, at the beginning. So, your overall opinion, Matt. I would love to hear your overall opinion about this film, because I don't think you liked it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I that liked it. That was sarcasm. It. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't find a whole lot wrong with it. Like, honestly... I was really into it from, like, moment one. Well, can I say something real quick? The thing, remember the guys behind us. Okay, the guys behind us. I'm going to point this out real quick. They're like, we didn't like how slow it was in the beginning. I was like. I didn't feel that way. I was like, it was like 10 minutes in the beginning that was slow. Because they're developing the fact of this. That they're building the tension. But they put you right into the story, so I didn't feel like it was slow. I didn't have any negatives about this film. The I only felt- negative I had was whenever the boy ran through the woods, but you have time to say he's eight year old boy. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, and that was, you know, and, and it was done for reason anyway, yeah. so it worked for the film. But he's so, an eight year old boy, he's not going to have reason, so like, that was explainable. Like, honestly, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Well, I'm going to say the best 
movies I've ever seen because, you know, my favorite movie of all time is Get Out. Well, so. you know, yes, and Get Out was a, a fantastic film. But I'm going to say that Quiet Place is like the best of the year. This is my number one so far, but it's the beginning of the year. It's the beginning of the year. It's my number one so far, but I'm going to have to say that the reason I like this film so much is because it's not often you watch a horror film where they outsmart you. Yeah. They came up with ideas that I didn't think about. Yeah. I mean, it was, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. You know, I've seen characters that are dead. I've seen high thriller tensions like high you know, mission. you know stuff like you know yeah where some where characters that but they never put me in their shoes mm -hmm. like they did mm -hmm. in a quiet place yeah i really felt for these characters yeah really felt for these characters i mean you know i did because i was digging into your army yeah the time. About to get into spoilers. Spoiler guys. alert! Spoiler, spoiler alert. alert! We're about to get into spoilers because we have a lot to say about this. Now, go back into our categories and we're getting spoilers. What do you think about the acting? I'm going to get into acting with the spoilers. I'm sorry when she went into labor. Oh my God! I was like, that bitch is a strong fucking woman. No, I was sitting there. I was like, that's a strong fucking woman. Because I went through that pain. I was like, there's no fucking way. Even if I wanted to, there's no way I could sit there and not make a peep. But she did scream. When, when they, the fireworks, when the fireworks went, yes. went off, and oh it was like, god! Shoot. And that was the brilliant part. It was I told you so about. brilliant. That was so smart. It was because it was like she was like, if I can just get long enough, if I can wait when long they enough about for, the for someone to get to the fireworks, because she put those red lights on yeah, to them let them know, know yes. I'm in danger. Yeah, and they let the fireworks. And then they let the fireworks, and she and screamed, and oh my. God. Brilliant. The bloody then, hand on the shower. Yes. Oh. And then and then they gave him the oxygen mask and then put the hood over the oxygen mask. I saw that beforehand, before like when she was still pregnant and she was setting up the mobile and everything. I did too, but I thought I that was left over box. from the last baby. No. I thought that was left over from the last baby. I though. saw her setting it up. I saw the box. I mm -hmm. saw the lid. And then I was like, wait a minute. And then I saw the oxygen tank and I went, ooh, smart. Well, see, I thought the oxygen tank was left over from the baby that died. Oh, uh, yeah, it was. That's why I thought it was left over because she put on the, she put on the bed, she started crying. And that shows me because the baby. But let's, let's look about that. Look, look, remember the kid that died in the beginning of the film. Um, yeah, that, I started crying over that. Remember, I, he was already six or seven. And no, film, he was like five, four or five. Between five and seven. And the film starts, what, 82 days mm -hmm. into? So there's no way that that baby would have been I know, but tank. I still couldn't watch that scene. That scene killed me. No, I'm just saying there's no way that that kid would have needed an oxygen sure, tank or sure, anything. That sure. This wasn't happening back when he was born. True, so true. they were having, but that fight. scene fucking killed me. One thing that bothered me was this is happening in the world. You don't know what's going on. Why are you pregnant? Why are you letting See, this happen? See, that's a whole Walking Dead that scenario. Bothered too. me a little bit. I was like, I don't think I. I think I'd be doing some kind of contraceptive at this point just to make sure. And as soon as she turned around and she looked at the microphone and she took her thing off, she went, she turned up the volume and her mom went, kook, kook, with the scene. shotgun <laughs> and in scene title, title credits. And it was like, yes. Yeah. Because so. as soon as she went, she grabbed her mic and she looked at her mom. She nodded her head and turned the volume and her mom went, kook, kook. Yeah. Yeah. It was, there was so much in this movie done with Facial expressions and social cues and body language and it's nice to see that in film. Yeah, it it's is. nice to see that in film again because it's yeah. it's been ignored exactly for a really long time. And it's this movie, even if it never gets any awards, to me is a masterpiece. But see, and that's the thing about it, like me and her were talking about it when we got in the car after seeing this film. I was like, 
it's so annoying how like horror films when they are nominated for Oscars, they're revamped. Oh, Silence of the Lambs is a psychological thriller. A suspenseful thriller. Yeah, you so know. I feel like A Quiet Place deserves a nomination for screenplay because it's amazing. It's amazing to have. And Emily Blunt should definitely be Best yes. Actress. Definitely get at least a nomination for Best Actress because she had me in my feels. She had me in my, like, all kinds of... When she was in labor, I was like, she gonna step on that nail! She's gonna step yeah, on the nail! Yeah, yeah. No! 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 And she did. And she didn't scream like I thought she would. Yeah? But she broke something. Yeah. She dropped that. But that's what the noise was. She broke something. She didn't scream because she was like... She bit her she, arm. Yeah, she bit her arm. She did that. She did that. She did that movie so well. They Everybody in this film, hell, even the little old man that was in it for two seconds. He walked in and saw his wife. Yeah. And he, he just went. But the thing about that pissed me off about that is, what pissed me off about that point is, when do you sit there and see somebody with a child? And yeah. they'd be like, and then you're fuck gonna, it, we're all going to die. Right? Fuck it, we're all going to die. Do we want to talk about John Krasinski for one moment with those yes. heartbreaking? Oh, God. John Krasinski. Since we're in the spoiler part We're anyway. in the spoiler part anyway, so we're going to go. That scene, I love you. I've always loved you. I, I was we started crying. sobbing. Me and him were crying. We're sobbing. Crying. I was like wrapped with sobs we're because. Crying. We're crying. If you, I'm sure you've, if you're watching the spoiler part, you've seen the film, but the little boy, the little deaf girl think she blames herself for the for death of her brother, little brother, yeah, for because brother. she slides him the rocket ship. She didn't know he was going to grab the batteries. She doesn't realize he's going to grab the batteries and turn it on, but mm -hmm. she, you know, she was trying to be sweet. And so she blames herself. And she, the little and she feels like her father blames her. Exactly. And so when he realizes, I'm about to die to save well, you. Well, back in the riverfront, the little brother was like, Yeah. He she asked thinks him. you blame, do you blame her for the death? And he goes, Of course I don't. Because there's a part, there's a river going. Y'all remember the river scene where they can actually talk? Yeah. The, because there's a waterfall. And the father explains mm -hmm. if you're around a bigger noise, it's okay. To make some noise. Because they're used to that noise. Yeah. So they don't see anything. And he goes, do you blame her? He goes, of course I don't. He goes, you should tell her that you love her. He's he like, goes, of course I love her. He goes, you should tell her that. Yeah, he's like, you need to tell her that you don't blame her because she already, you shouldn't blame her because she already blames herself. Because he's like, I don't blame her. He goes, well, you should tell her that you love her. He goes, do you still love her? He goes, of course I do. He goes, you need to tell her because she doesn't know. So the ending scene where she's in... The car. Yeah, and, and the being creature's attacked. on top. He stops there and he goes, he in sign language, he goes, I love you. I, I have always, always loved, loved you. you. And then he screams and the creature runs after him. And then and they start the, the car. Yeah. He's screaming while he's getting attacked. While he's getting eaten, he keeps screaming because he knows while he's screaming, they can drive off. Mm -hmm. And that I part, want to cry right now. I like, know. Here's while they're driving. Like I said, there's so much done with social cues. There's so much done with body language that it just makes you feel all the feels. The best part of the the movie was the ending. The end scene. The ending. The, the end ending scene. Made. Wow. We were like, yes! yes! <laughs> like we were so loud. This best right here. Yes. The best. Like it's I love a that very scene. vindicating moment. Yes. It's like. You just put me through the ringer, John Krasinski. Yes. You better give me a good ending. They realize the frequency and the deaf the deaf daughter's earpiece goes off. And Emily Blunt, it gets... Yeah. <laughs> she, she, yeah she should yes, say. they're at, like, they have a microphone and radio transmitters. And she realizes with the one monster that's come after her, she realizes how to kill them. Well, Emily Blunt shoots it. And it sends what is it? All... The frequency. She does a frequency yeah. and it stills and she shoots in the face. She shoots in the head and it falls dead. 
but then that summons all the rest of them to head towards them, and you just see her turn up that volume, and then look at her mother, and her mother just cocks that shotgun, and it blasts. Well, she, she, she's holding her meter, and she turns it all in blast, and she looks at her mom, she nods, and her mother goes, cook, cook. and then the end. Yeah. And I'm like, yes! She, because she turned that freak scene on, that creature went, <laughs> that creature freaked out, that freak scene, so imagine how high she turned it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We were losing our voices right now. Just yeah, because it's been it's a been long like, night. Uh, it's been a yeah, long emotional yes, night. Yes, it has. So, um, thank you guys for watching our review. <laughs> we're losing our voices right now. So remember, be nice to each other, love each other, life's too short, and keep it creepy. Bye. Bye, guys. I so love horror movies.